Get ready for a journey through the law-infused streets of Mega City 1. Today, we're taking a deep dive into every Judge Dredd game ever released. From his early pixel days to the latest 3D adventures, we'll explore how Dredd dispenses justice in the digital world. Strap in as we navigate the evolution of Judge Dredd's gaming saga, where every decision is a matter of law and order. Courts adjourned, let the gaming exploration begin. Before we dive into the details of today's topic, please show us some support by liking and subscribing. It means a lot to us. Thank you. The Judge, ZX Spectrum game. Set in the iconic Mega City 1, players navigate Judge Dredd through various missions, battling cybernetic dogs and searching for criminals. The game's mechanics are reflective of its era, with basic controls and a straightforward objective of locating and apprehending perps. The gameplay, while simplistic, captures the essence of the Judge Dredd universe, with references to mega blocks and the character's tough law enforcement style. The graphics and sound are typical of the ZX Spectrum's capabilities, offering a pixelated yet charming experience. However, the game's design shows its age, with some clunky controls and repetitive gameplay elements. Overall, it's a nostalgic piece for fans of retro gaming and Judge Dredd, providing a glimpse into the early days of video game adaptations of comic book characters. <laughs> Judge Dredd, 1992, arcade, unreleased but playable through emulators. The Judge Dredd arcade game, developed by Midway in the 1990s, was an ambitious project that aimed to bring the gritty world of the 2000 AD comic to life. The game was a scrolling brawler, where players controlled Judge Dredd, fighting through Mega City 1 using fists and feet against various enemies, including thugs and giant sewer rats. What set this game apart was its impressive background graphics, which vividly depicted a futuristic cityscape complete with flying vehicles and humorous advertisements capturing the essence of the comics universe. Despite its potential, the game faced challenges. It was criticized for its repetitive gameplay, focusing mainly on Dredd's physical combat rather than utilizing his iconic firearm. This, coupled with the shifting gaming landscape that favored one-on-one -on -one fighters like Street Fighter II and Mortal Kombat, led to a lukewarm response from test audiences. Ultimately, despite efforts to revive and rework the project, the game was never officially released. The Judge Dredd arcade game remains a fascinating piece of gaming history, a testament to the challenges of adapting a complex comic world into a video game. Its unfinished state and the glimpses of its potential make it a curious, albeit incomplete, tribute to the Judge Dredd legacy. Judge Dredd, 1995. Judge Dredd, based on the 1995 Stallone film, is a visually impressive game that stands out for its animation quality, especially for its time. The game features Judge Dredd in the dystopian Mega City 1, where he battles various enemies using a mix of shooting and melee combat. The game's attention to detail, such as reflections in the HUD, adds to its immersive quality. However, the gameplay experience is mixed. Combat can feel repetitive, with players often trading bullets with enemies until one falls. The game offers a variety of melee moves, but the combat mechanics can be clunky, making it challenging to dodge attacks effectively. Additionally, the game requires players to search levels for specific items, which can be tedious and detracts from the overall pacing. While Judge Dredd excels in graphics and animation, its gameplay falls short, lacking the depth and fluidity that would make it more engaging. The game is better than its predecessors, but still struggles to deliver a compelling gameplay experience beyond its visual appeal. Odious. Judge Dredd, 1997. I recently played Judge Dredd on the PlayStation for this review, a light gun shooter that immerses you in the gritty world of Mega City 1. 
As Judge Dredd, portrayed by Richard Waters, I embarked on a daring mission to rescue the mayor from Roy Standbean, a former judge turned criminal. The game took me through various action-packed levels, starting with a confrontation against armed guards and a monorail, followed by an intense elevator fight and a battle against an airplane. Throughout the game, I experienced typical light gun shooter mechanics, though some sequences felt less thrilling than others. The gameplay continued in a similar vein, leading up to the final showdown with the antagonist. One aspect of the game that stood out to me was its full motion video story. Despite the game's overall poor reception, I found the story to be entertaining. It was filled with cheesy yet endearing elements that added charm to the experience. The narrative unfolded through different settings, including a factory level and a corridor filled with turrets and mounted guns, culminating in a rooftop battle. The climax of my adventure was the confrontation with the main villain at the Justice Department, an unexpected location considering its role in deploying judges. After defeating the villain and rescuing the mayor, I was left with a reminder that Judge Dredd's job is never done, as there will always be more criminals to face. They are judge, jury, and executioner all in one. The most feared and respected of all the judges is Dredd. He is the law. Judge Dredd, Dredd vs. Death. Let me tell you about my experience playing Judge Dredd, Dredd vs. Death on the PS2. Frankly, it was a mixed bag. The game, set in the atmospheric Mega City 1, promised an engaging experience with its varied missions and interesting level design. However, it was let down by a dated game engine that failed to extract the most from this promising license. It felt like a relic from the 6th generation console era, desperately trying to emulate the success of games like Half-Life, but falling short. The gameplay in Mega City 1 was fun to explore, with dark humor and quirky details like citizens on wheels and bizarre futuristic cuisine. The secondary objectives around the main missions were a nice touch, integrating well with the gameplay. However, the combat was a letdown. The shooting mechanics felt imprecise and unexciting, especially against faster enemies who were more of an irritation than a challenge. The AI was another sore point. While it was nice to have help from street judges in firefights, they, along with the civilians, were frustratingly fragile. This was particularly annoying during escort missions where vampires would spawn out of nowhere, often leading to mission failure before I even had a chance to react. The level design had its moments with the Mega Mall being a highlight. The bosses were novel, especially Judge Fire, fought in a multi-floored smokatorium. However, the last couple of levels felt lackluster, failing to maintain the momentum built up earlier in the game. In summary, Judge Dread Dread vs. Death had potential with its engaging setting and level design, but it was ultimately let down by mediocre gameplay and technical limitations. It's one of the better Judge Dread games out there, but that's not saying much. For fans of the graphic novels, it might be worth a play, but FPS enthusiasts will likely find it unremarkable and forgettable. My verdict? A 610. It's just about passable. Judge Dread Java Game 2004. I remember trying out the Judge Dread Java game released in 2004 on my mobile phone, so I tried to find and eventually used an emulator to play the game. Given the limitations of mobile gaming at the time, my expectations were aligned with the technology of that era. The game featured basic graphics, which was typical for Java games, but it captured the essence of the Judge Dread universe quite well. The gameplay was straightforward and easy to grasp, suitable for the simple controls of early mobile phones. I navigated through various levels, confronting enemies in a manner that felt true to Judge Dredd's character. The action was quite basic, focusing on the core elements of shooting and arresting criminals. To be honest, you won't like to play that game in today's age, because it's too old now. These days you have proper retro handhelds, like Onbernik's RG Nano, that are of the size of a keychain, and they can play games up till PlayStation. So, the exhilarating experience of playing a basic Judge Dredd shooter game with a single button press on a one-inch screen might not titillate your gaming taste buds. <laughs> J. 
Judge Dredd vs. Zombies 2012 played Judge Dredd vs. Zombies on my iPhone, and let's just say it was an experience. The game puts you in the shoes of the iconic Judge Dredd battling zombies in a top-down shooter format. The concept seemed promising, especially with the auto lock on fire button, which was a neat touch. It allowed for some strategic gameplay, funneling zombies into choke points and using exploding barrels for maximum effect. So far, so good, right? But here's where things started to go south. The game's reliance on microtransactions was a massive letdown. It's one thing to have optional boosts in a freemium game, but Judge Dredd vs. Zombies took it to another level. Progressing through the game felt like hitting a paywall. The level progression system, based on collecting stars, became increasingly demanding, practically forcing you to spend extra cash to unlock levels. The game's three sections, each with ten levels, required an absurd number of stars to progress. This design choice felt like a blatant cash grab, undermining the entire gaming experience. Sure, you could grind earlier levels for better ratings, but even that was limited. You couldn't farm levels for credits to upgrade weapons or buy power-ups. Instead, you're nudged towards spending real money anywhere from $2 to $30 to buy the credits you need. My advice? Save your money and your time. There are far better shooters out there that won't nickel and dime you for every bit of progress. Standard execution. Judge Dredd, Crime Files, 2019. I recently played Judge Dredd Crime Files on my mobile, and I've got to say, I am not a turn-based card game player. But to help you guys understand this game better, I did try to play this with an open mind. The game, developed by No Yetis Allowed, is the second Judge Dredd game for mobile platforms, following Judge Dredd vs. Zombies. Here's my brutally honest take on it. Starting with the positives, the story was the game's strongest suit. It's an original narrative broken down into different crime files, each with its own plot. The storytelling through text really captured the essence of the Dread universe. However, the game could have benefited from more engaging illustrations to complement the stories. The gameplay is a turn-based combat system using cards, which I found quite innovative. Each card has a turn number, and you need to strategize your moves based on when the perps will attack. This system encourages thoughtful gameplay, which I appreciated. However, the progression system was less impressive. Unlocking each chapter required clue cards obtained through patrols, which were repetitive and unfulfilling. It felt like a grind and not in a good way. Visually, the game did a decent job. The combination of 2D backdrops and 3D models worked well, and the art was close to the comics. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, microtransactions. This is where the game really lost me. The implementation of microtransactions felt aggressive and detrimental to the overall experience. By the end of the first crime file, it felt like I had to pay to progress, which was frustrating. In conclusion, while Judge Dredd Crime Files had its moments with an engaging story and a unique combat system, it was ultimately let down by its repetitive gameplay and heavy-handed microtransactions. If you're a die-hard fan of the franchise, you might find some enjoyment here, but don't expect to stick around for long. New AAA Judge Dredd game? After diving into the recent discussions about the new RoboCop game, RoboCop Rogue City, and its success, I've been thinking a lot about Judge Dredd and his portrayal in video games. Most of the Judge Dredd games I've played have been, at best, passable, and at worst, outright bad. This iconic character, much like RoboCop, deserves a proper AAA treatment in the gaming world. RoboCop Rogue City has shown that with the right approach, a game can be more than just a run-of-the-mill licensed product. It's an exciting and varied RPG, packed with engaging gameplay and faithful to its source material. This game has set a new standard for how characters from other media can be adapted into video games. Now, when I think about Judge Dredd, a character who shares thematic similarities with RoboCop, it's clear that he too could benefit from a similar gaming reboot. Imagine a game that's a soft sequel to the 2012 film 
Dread, with Carl Urban reprising his role. The game could feature a narrative-led direction focusing on storytelling and role-playing elements while still delivering the ultra-violent action that's a staple of the Dread universe. The potential for a new Judge Dread game is enormous. With the right mix of open exploration and curated story beats, it could offer a role-playing experience that lets players dispense justice in Mega City 1. The technology and gameplay ideas have evolved significantly since the last Dread game, and it's time to leverage these advancements. That's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed what we presented in this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Catch you guys later.